Leah from the library. I hope you are all well and staying healthy. Um, and thanks for joining us today for the bullet journal program. You may be wondering what a bullet journal is. Um, they're kind of like a planner and a to-do list and a diary and a journal and um, a scrapbook kind of all rolled into one. Um, it's a place where you can jot down any idea that you have or stray thought or plan that you need to make in one place so that you've got it with you all the time. Um, I love my bullet journal and when I don't um, work in my bullet journal, I get very confused and very lost and I don't know where I am or who I'm supposed to be or what's happening in my world. <laughs> I have come to rely on my bullet journal a lot. I used to always have um, notes jotted down on scraps of paper that I would find in my pants pockets when I did the laundry at the end of the week and I was like, gee, I wonder what this means. I don't remember anymore. Um, but now that I've got my bullet journal, all of those thoughts go in one place and I've got, um, I can keep track of them better. Um, so the bullet journal was, it's a method created by writer Carol. Um, and he's got information posted about what a true bullet journal is. Um, in very basic terms, it's a, um, just a list. All you need to bullet journal is a pen and a notebook. Now, if you Google bullet journals and you like go and look at images, you'll see very elaborate bullet journals. Um, people, people turn these into works of art. They get very decorative and they draw and they make these beautiful pictures. And when you see that, it can be very, very daunting. Um, you might think, I could never do that. And you think it's not something that's for you, but it doesn't have to be that elaborate. Um, the way I bullet journal, is somewhere in between Ryder Carroll's very, very basic bullet journal, which is just one pen and a notebook and very simple lines and the more elaborate bullet journals with beautiful pictures. I can't draw. I would love to be able to draw and make those beautiful pictures, but I can't. That's not a skill set that I have. Um, I can't write real pretty. I'm very jealous of my sister, Lily, who can do that. She's got beautiful calligraphy, handwriting. That's not me. I can't do that. So my bullet journal is kind of, um, I, I, I try to kind of dress it up. Um, I pull in things like markers and stickers to make my bullet journal look uh, prettier, but that's not necessary at all. Truthfully, all you need is a pen and a notebook. Um, the kind of notebook you'll see is, uh, very different. I've seen people use wire bound spiral notebooks like you would get for, you know, class um, in high school. Um, I've seen people get very fancy notebooks. Any of those works. Um, I see have seen people use blank paper, lined paper, graph paper. Um, more often than not, you'll see people use dot grid journals. And that's where the pages have you probably can't see, but there are tiny little dots on the paper um, and where you could make lines or graphs. It makes making straight lines easier, although even with a ruler, I can't make a straight line, so don't worry about it. Um, that's, that's the kind of notebook you'll see most often. Um, and also, probably the most popular size is this A5 size. Um, I've been using using that for the last couple years and I decided to switch it up and my newest journal is a B5 size so it's a bit bigger um just gives me more room to work because I've got really big really sloppy handwriting and I struggled getting everything that I wanted down in the A5 notebook so I went up a size and I carry this with me in my work bag to and from work so it's not too big for me to carry around um, I'm really a fan of the size. Um, but a lot of times when people talk about bullet journals, they'll talk about things like collections. What collections are, are um, like pages you've put together to group ideas together. Like um, here, here's a collection. 
this is like my goals page. This is a spread. And when the people talk about a spread, they just mean like the two pages that are together. Um, a spread where I have put together what my goals are, things that I'm working towards. I could turn back to this page to be inspired and try to work towards those goals. But um, but that any type, anything you group together like that is a collection. Um, there are monthly um, logs. With monthly logs, in the traditional sense, it's just a, a list like this where you've got the days 1 through 31 and then the letter of the week right next to it. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's, it's a very simple way of keeping track. And then right beside the, the day and the number, you write what you're doing. And that's the very basic bullet journal method that writer Carol created. That doesn't work for me. I don't think that way. I want to see my month laid out in a month format. So I draw myself a calendar and you can do whatever works for you. Um, and I will draw calendars for the whole year. I think I've got June set up next. Um, and I, so that I can work ahead in the traditional bullet journal method. Um, you'll have a future log where you've got like those those pages where you can keep track of what's coming ahead. Um, in the front of my journal, I'll draw all of the months out so I can um, work ahead that way. Um, sometimes you'll see future logs like this where you've got the month and then just open space where you can work. Um, sometimes you'll see future logs like this where you've got the months spread out and maybe not quite as much space to work. And then you'll have Where are we? Like an at a glance page where you can see like the whole year laid out in one spot. This is my last year's journal, so it's 2019, not 2020. Um, another part of the bullet journal is the key. And that's where you write down all the symbols you're gonna use in your bullet journal so that you can keep track of what you're doing. Most people use a symbol of some sort for an event. Um, traditionally, it's a dot. I like a checkbox. I, I draw a box because I get great satisfaction of checking that off when, when I complete something. So I do mine differently. But there's usually like a, a symbol that denotes a task that you're going to do, um, a different symbol that you'll that'll be like an event that's happening, um, a symbol for a meeting or an appointment that you need to keep. Um, and then you can do things, keep track of like if it's something that you're canceling, drawing a line through it, or for something that you're rescheduling, drawing an arrow. So, so to denote that that, that um, task or event has been moved to a different page. Um, there's lots written about bullet journaling. Ryder Carroll has a book out called The Bullet Journal Method. I would show it to you, but our copy is checked out. Um, it is available on digital downloads if you wanted to download it. Um, and then there's this book, which I loved, I really liked this book. It's called Dart, Dot Journaling, A Practical Di Guide, How to Start and Keep the Planner, To-Do List, and Diary That'll Actually Help You Get Your Life Together by Rachel Wilkerson Miller. I loved this book and I think I read through it twice. Um, I think the first night I actually read through it all in one sitting. Um, but it, it lays out and explains to you all the different parts of the bullet journal and um, how you can make it work for you. And that's one of the beautiful things about bullet journaling is it's completely adaptable and you make it work for you. You might be wondering why I'm talking to you about like a planner in the middle of May. Well, that's the thing about bullet journaling. You can pick it up and put it down at any time. Um, I'll tell you, the middle of March, my bullet journal fell apart and I did not bullet journal from the middle of March until the beginning of May. Um, I struggled with that because I didn't know what was going on in my life and there was a lot to keep track of, but it just was something that I just, I, I couldn't focus enough to do it. So I didn't do it and that's okay. Um, there are times when I think last year I missed two weeks, the whole year where I didn't bullet journal and those were like the busiest two weeks of my entire year when I really should have been bullet journaling to keep track of everything that was going on. But you just, you stop and then you pick up and you turn the page and you start a fresh week.
And that's one of the things with bullet journaling. You do it as you go. Like I said, for me, I need to see my year laid out at the beginning of the year because I'm planning things six, nine months ahead um, at work. So I need to have my entire year laid out so I can do that planning ahead. But once I get into the month, so I'll do all of my monthly spreads at the beginning, which isn't how you're supposed to do it, but that's what works for me. And then once I get into a month, let me see, let me get there. Um, I will do one week at a time and um, not do the next week until I get to that next week. One of the beautiful things about doing it that way is it gives you that space to journal and think about what is going on in your life. Because here I am, middle of February, I had some stuff on my mind I had to get out. So I just flipped the page and started journaling in my, in my book and got the thoughts out that I needed to get out. And then turned the page and started another week. That's, that's what the bullet journal is designed for. Because you're building it as you go, you've got room for those thoughts or that grocery list or that um, party planning session or that packing list that you've got to get down right there when you need it. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my next week's bullet journal. With my bullet journal, like I said, I, I like to have my monthly view and then I'll put all my months together and then I'll get into my month. And I like to do a monthly cover page, just a way to get me excited about the month that's coming. Um, I usually have a reading list where as I finish a book, I'll jot down that book title. I'll give myself a page where I've got room to think. Um, some people call that a brain dump, but I don't like that term. So I just call it room to think. So I can, things that I need to think about or consider or uh, plan on. And then I'll jump into my weeklies and I'll start planning my weeks. Sometimes I'll do a very simple one like this where it's just the day and I jot down what's happening. Um, often I will put boxes where I can do some planning. I always leave myself a nice big space for a to-do list um, because I've got lots of tasks that I have to do that don't necessarily have to happen on a certain day. So I'll just jot them down and whenever they get done, they get done and I cross them off and so that I can leave time for like appointments or meetings that I have to attend on certain days in the boxes for those days. So let's go ahead and flip the next page. And that's where we'll get started doing the setup for next week. Do you use stencils or freehand? Um, I do both. I do a lot of freehand, but like for something, for this circle here, I used a stencil. I used a stencil for that, but like my lettering is mostly freehand. As you can see, like in this one, my, my, my lines are not straight <laughs> at all. Like those lines aren't straight, um, but that's okay. I do use a ruler a lot of times when I'm trying to get a straighter line, but even when I'm using a ruler, I don't necessarily get very straight lines. Um, that's why I love stickers and washi tape. It makes it fun. So here um, I'm going to put in some boxes for my days of the week. Let's see. And I went through and I um, marked these off earlier. So, I, and that's a, a great tip. When you're going in and doing your bullet journal layout, um, you might want to do it in pencil first or make some marks in your book in pencil first so you know where you're drawing. Um, it just makes it a lot easier when you're going through. And this is one of those layouts that it's very effective and it's so easy to do. It's a bunch of rectangles. That's it. It's a bunch of rectangles, but it gets your week divided out into a way that um, is really useful. Can you discuss pens and bleed? Is there any bleed through? There are, <laughs> there are lots of different journals out there. This journal um, here, this first one I have, this pink one. It's a Loistrum. Um, no one actually knows how to pronounce that name. Um, we all just guess. It's a type of journal that has very thin pages. And there is 
um, a lot of ghosting. You see, if you're looking like here, can you see how you can very faintly see the writing that's on the back of that page? That's called ghosting. Can you see that at all? Um, and with the Loistrum, because the pages are so thin, you get that a lot. Um, the current journal that I'm working in, it's called a an Archer and Olive. The pages are much thicker. And even when I do a lot of coloring, I don't get any uh, ghosting and I have had absolutely no trouble with bleed through. Now I don't use alcohol markers. Some people with alcohol markers might still experience bleed through, but with your basic water-based um, water markers, I'm, I haven't had any trouble. I am a big fan of the Tombow um, dual tip markers. There's a brush point on one side and a, a, a smaller point on the other for drawing lines. Um, I love these markers. They come in a variety of colors and they just to me are, I, I really like them. But you don't have to go expensive. Another type of marker that I really like is the Crayola Super Tip. I got a pack of 50 of these for I think $9 at uh, Meyer. So these are not the Crayola. They're they're um, wonderful colors. Um, the thing that I don't like about them is they don't tell me what the name of the color is. So it's really hard to remember to find the right color to use sometimes. And sometimes the, the cap is not as close to the true color of the marker as you think it will be. Um, but other than that, they're, these are great and I use them all the time. I use this marker last week to make my squares. Um, so you don't have to get expensive in your supplies. Um, I am fond of the, there's, there, there's some kind of micro pens that are super popular that everyone uses. I have the generic version and they work just as well. Um, so, yep. And then can you still see, just kind of turning my book all around makes it easier for me to make the lines and now I'm just making lines the other direction so and one of the things that I found most intimidating when I started bullet journaling was the blank page you get this book and it's absolutely pristine it's gorgeous and you don't want to mess it up. So you're afraid to start. Let me tell you a little secret. You're gonna mess up. And that's okay, we all mess up. Um, that's why doing things in pencil first, it helps. Um, but you know what? There are ways to fix it if you mess up. Um, one, one great way is to slap a sticker on, the, on top of the, your mistake, or a piece of washi tape, or um, you could cut out a page from the back of your book. Be careful cutting out pages though because you, you can make your book fall apart if you do it wrong. Um, but some of the books will have perforated pages in the back that are made to be torn out so that you can cover up mistakes in the front. Um, but just accept you're gonna make mistakes and you're human and that's okay. Um, another thing that people get very upset about when they start bullet journaling, especially if they're looking at bullet journalers online who do things and have this gorgeous handwriting they get upset because their handwriting isn't as pretty guess what it's your handwriting and it's your bullet journal you're the one who's going to be looking at it you don't need to compare yourself to someone else um another where is it where is it where is it another thing you can do is get like a white gel pen we could look like over here in this corner i went over the over the edge a little bit. So you know what? I could take the white gel pen and cover up that line. Just cover it and no one is going to see that I went over the edge because the white on white, it disappears. So it's not a big deal. And there I just wrote on my bullet journal right in the middle of the page. Luckily I did it with a pencil. <laughs> so, so yeah, you just um, have fun with it. All right. So I'm going to make now some boxes for my to-do list because I would be lost without my to-do list. 
I try really hard with my 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 markers and my ruler to get a straight line. It never works. But again, I'm the only one looking at it, so it doesn't really matter. I like to make two boxes when I'm making um, my to-do list boxes. One of these boxes is my to-do list for the current week, and that's usually a much bigger box. And the next is my to-do list for the following week, because right now, the rest of my book is blank. I don't have room. I don't have it set up to write down something that I need to remember next week. So I make myself a square this week for those things that I need to, to take care of next week. And then when I'm setting up next week, I will turn back to this page and see anything that I've written in this box and put it on my, my calendar for next week. This is very, very simple bullet journaling. And it doesn't have to be anything very complicated. Like I said, it's very easy to get discouraged at first when you see some of the bullet journals that people put out. But once you start watching, most of their bullet journals are very simple shapes that they use over and over again. I kind of have a couple layouts that I will go to again and again. This is one that, that, that I like a lot. It gives me nice big boxes for my to-do list during the week. Slightly smaller boxes on the weekend because let's face it, we don't do as much on the weekends. Well, we do stuff, but it's fun stuff that we don't have to like plan and schedule and meetings that we have to be at. So I don't need as much room on the weekends. And then my to-do list for the things that I've got to get done this week and then a little space for next week. And then up here, I can just do decorative stuff. Now, like I said, I'm a fan of the sticker. So I use lots of stickers when I am bullet journaling. So let's do that. Stickers are not at all necessary, but I think they just make it fun. So it's got a little M on there, so I know that's Monday. This one's got a little T, so that's Tuesday. Um, the stickers that I'm using right now, they're from a bullet journaler whose name is um, Planning with Kay. I like her. I think she does very practical bullet journaling stuff. So sometimes when I'm inspired, I will buy some of her stickers, but it's not necessary at all um, to do that. Lots of days, I write it in with pencil and pen. It's You don't have to go the sticker route. That's just what I like to do. So I do that sometimes. Um, makes me feel, I think it gives it a, a, a fun, fun look. And then it's just, um, I will go through and write the dates for what I'm doing and maybe put some decorative uh, touches up here. But that's my, my, my layout for next week. So, and you saw how simple that was. It was just a ruler and a marker. Do you create a section for long-term planning? Yes, my um, monthly spreads. Here, let me, let me grab this, this one. Um, for when I start the bullet journal, I will, in the very beginning, I, I'll, I'll go through and I will do the whole year in the front of the, the, the bullet journal. So I've got room to plan, um, the whole year right there in the front. Um, and then I actually ran out of room for this journal. So October, November, and December ended up in this book. So there's not much there. But it gives me room, so I had the whole year laid out. At the very beginning of 2019, I had the whole year laid out. And then I made space for 2020. I left just a tiny little bit of space for planning for 2020. But you know, you go to the doctor, they're like, oh, you need to come back in a year. So you, you jot that appointment down. Or um, you know, there's a big event that you'll be, that you have to plan for a year in advance. Like I knew I was going to a conference, so I was able to put that down. So that gave me two years worth of planning in just, I don't know, 12, 30, 20 or 30 pages in the front of my journal. And then I, um, yeah, so that's two years of planning. 
um, right there in the front. So that's kind of how I do long-term planning. And like in the front of this one, I just started this book. Um, May is the first month that I'm doing in here. So I've got my, my May done. I have started decorating June. The rest of them I've got penciled in, <laughs> but I haven't finished doing the months yet um, because I just started this one. It's been kind of, the world has been kind of crazy lately. And for some reason I've had trouble concentrating on this, but I'm getting there. It will be done soon. <laughs> so, so yeah, I like to lay out the whole year in the front of the book and then give myself some room for some extra future planning. Um, I like to do, I like to do quote pages and like a, a an intro introductory page. This is one thing that I did new this year that I'm in this book that I'm really excited about. I've made myself a reusable shopping page um, where I'm just planning on putting my post-it notes because I always jot stuff down on post-it notes and I can put those post-it notes here in the front of the book so that where my grocery list is, it will always be here in the front of the book, but I don't have to use pages, use up lots of pages making grocery lists or, you know, shopping lists like get stamps. I can um, reuse this page again and again and again. So that's one of the things that I'm excited about. I also like to make myself a a um, a wish list page, um, and I divide it in half for the things that I want and then the things that I need. Um, like I really want a pair, of, new pair of prescription sunglasses. Is it going to happen? I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe not. So I put it in the want page, um, and then I also like to keep a waiting on page. This is for things that I've ordered online and I'm waiting for them to be delivered. Like I ordered some more face masks. Those should be coming soon, but um, I don't actually have tracking information for them yet. They were back ordered. So um, yeah, I like to keep a list of the things that I'm waiting on so I can make sure they actually arrive. We already talked about my goals page a little bit. I just, I like to make this page pretty and fun so that I get inspired when I look at it again. Um, and then I make um, a list, like a get it done page. These are my big projects that I'm working on, things that are going to take like a lot of time and planning. Um, and then an adventures page. I haven't filled this one out yet, but there are lots of things that I'm planning on doing, like a road trip and a couple of other things that will go here that um, are, will be my adventures for the year. And then I just jump into my calendars. Lots of people track lots and lots of things in their bullet journal. I don't feel the need to, so... I don't. All right. So I, thanks for joining me. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, like I said, uh, Ryder Carroll's bullet journal book is available on digital downloads. And this jot journaling book, there's one copy in the library. You can put it on hold and get it curbside pickup next week. Or it's available on Hoopla if you're so inclined. Thanks. Have a great day.